In Before Watch Mojo steals this video idea, these are the top 10 anime movies that bombed harder than Hindenburg financially. I'm ranking this based off budgets minus earnings equals their loss. Then adjust for inflation. The bigger the loss, the higher the ranking. Extra expenses like marketing and licensing aren't included in these numbers since they're not always made public. Just box office results. It's Deuce and Jam time. It's right, it's right, Hi, get out of the way, please. It's burning, bursting into flames, and, and it's falling on the morning fast, and all the folks have agreed that this is terrible. This is the work of the worst catastrophe. I never believed that there was a rainbow with a pot of gold at the end. Up there with the most underappreciated 90s animated movies was Cats Don't Dance, a WB musical that wasn't marketed much, dumped into theaters, and lost... 44 million dollars. There's actually a weird history with this movie. Cats was actually created by Turner Animation, who got bought out by WB. Included in the buyout was the already completed film Cats Don't Dance. The problem was WB had a movie coming out around the same time of Cats' release. I believe it was one of these. WB didn't want Cats to take the attention away from their own movie, so they spent nothing on advertising. But because Cats was already finished when they bought Turner Studios, any ticket sales would be pure profit. From box office numbers, it's a failure. To the studio, it's no money down. What was going to be a tax write-off is now a cult classic amongst furries and cartoon nerds. So I guess it all works out for Cats Don't Dance. Nothing's gonna stop us. Nothing's gonna stop us. Nothing's gonna stop us now. Two opposing races forged a peace they thought would last forever. <laughs> they were wrong. WRONG! Oh boy, Delgo, the Duke Nukem Forever of animation. This deserves a whole documentary on the subject, but to sum it up, this 2008 movie was in production since 1998. Why did this take 10 years to make? For one thing, this was a small studio struggling to get funding. Fathom Studios never made a movie before and were learning new animation techniques along the way. They were privately funded, but investors put more money and effort into other bigger films. There were tons of setbacks, like several crew members and voice actors who died during production, forcing them to find soundalikes to record the remaining lines. Upon its 2008 release, this $40 million passion project brought in half a million dollars. $45 million lost. Maybe someday I'll go into more detail about Delgo because it was only in theaters for one week. <laughs> this is your ferocious yag? Dorothy. Come in, Dorothy. Come back to the world of a timeless classic. How? How did something that looks like a Barbie DVD movie manage to cost $70 million? The Legend of Oz, Return of Dorothy, or Dorothy's Return, or Return of Oz, or Legend of Oz. It's Legend of, it's the Legend of Oz, Dorothy's Return, released just months after James Franco's Legend of Oz. And not to be confused with Return to Oz, or what, Return to Neverland, or whatever it was. Somehow, this no-name studio got enough investors hoping to start off a trilogy, a line of products, and theme park rides, but no. Nope. $54 million wasted. A cheap movie forgotten, but to clap back at the haters, one of the investors ranted on Facebook claiming that because they're a small studio, Big Hollywood feared Legend of Oz could be serious competition. So apparently Hollywood, quote, amassed their army of top paid critics who wielded their poison pens in a smear campaign against this wonderful family picture. These seemingly are just reviews of an average film, not liked by critics. They are propaganda and are written expressly to disillude everyone from seeing the film. <laughs> Whoa, careful. Don't OD on Red Pill, Alex Jones. Despite the movie bombing back in 2014, they still updated their investors as recent as 2017. But it's clear these investors, who they got by telemarketing random people, ain't getting their money back. Legends of Oz. <laughs> I knew they'd go nuts for that. Oh. Can you take me higher? It seems like the 2000s gave us all these cool sci-fi animated films that didn't do well. While Atlantis and Treasure Planet didn't make the list, Titan AE was the real studio killer. Oh, I understand the name now. 
Titan is a movie that had promise. Josh Whedon as a writer and Don Bluth directing, but it went through development hell at Fox Animation. They cut costs by firing 300 of its employees before release. With only two movies under its belt, Anastasia and this, Fox didn't stand a chance against the competition. $55 million down. They say it was actually a hundred million loss from all the development, marketing and such not included in the budget. But again, I'm just going by exact box office numbers for this list. 10 days after Titan's release, Fox Animation Studios shut down and Titan became the last Don Bluth directed film. But Titan AE will live on as a DVD bundle packed next to the classic, Everyone's Hero. This is real. Exhale. You gotta be kidding. Exhale. No, no, no. You can fly? You can fly! Here's a prime example of how financial failure does not equate a bad movie. The Iron Giant. After the studio's previous bomb of a film, The Quest for Camelot, WB barely gave Giant the time of day as they were ready to shut down the animated film division. While the executives didn't care, the crew making Iron Giant did. With limited marketing, Iron Giant's box office results cost the studio $70 million. While audiences didn't turn up at first, it was an instant classic amongst the animation community. Sure, it sucks when a great movie bombs, but over time, movies can make their money back through DVDs, Blu-rays, reruns, streaming, and 24-hour marathons. Anyone remember that? In 2003, Cartoon Network played the Iron Giant for 24 hours straight. They knew it was a good movie, so you could fucking watch it. Join us for a Cartoon Network tradition. It's 24 hours of the animation classic, The Iron Giant. It all gets underway Friday night at 7 on Cartoon Network. Always the same. You okay? Final Fantasy The Spirits Within, based on the video game franchise I never played, and judging by the movie, neither did the writers. At a time when anime and CG was the hot new thing, this combo of the two managed to entertain no one. It looked nothing like the games, while the realistic for the time CG was impressive, it was too uncanny for normies. Stars like Tom Hanks were worried CG actors will replace human actors. Promo material were treating the leads as real people. They even appeared in Maxim Magazine. CG actors could have been the future, but after after losing 78 million in the box office, the uncanny valley was subdued for now. Aren't you in enough trouble already? Jones! <laughs> Here comes another financial bomb from, oh, what a surprise, Warner Brothers, who didn't market the movie all that much. Crazy, I know. Osmosis Jones, a half live action, half animated buddy cop movie. It's animated enough to count, okay? Me and many others didn't care for the gross out live action bits, but the animated segments is what salvages the story. It definitely didn't deserve to lose. 79 million dollars. The then president of WB's domestic theatrical marketing, Brad Ball, had an excuse for his incompetence. Like many animated flops at the time, executives blamed 2D animation for the reason no one wanted to see Bill Murray vomit all over a teacher. After so many bombs, WB Animation produced just one more film, Looney Tunes Back in Action, which also bombed. They then took an 11 year hiatus from making theatrical movies till the Lego movie brought them back. Don't worry about Osmosis Jones' profit loss, I think WB gets a dollar every time a science class plays the movie. Wow, I'm feeling better already. You can call me Drix. Welcome to the city of Frame. Huh? Turn to Wacko's Wish on Cartoon Network's Cartoon Theater. Release my sister! Give me the potion by Moondown, or you'll never see your sister again. We must rescue Dawn! Who's with me? Think about the potential for Strange Magic by Lucasfilm. When you got the creator of Star Wars, George Lucas, and distribution by Disney, what could go wrong? Besides everything. 
Strange Magic was dumped out in 2015, the same year as The Force Awakens. When Disney now owns Star Wars, who needs this crappy musical by the guy who happened to have created Star Wars? Part of the Lucasfilm buyout had Disney contractually obligated to distribute Strange Magic in some form, even if it meant the bare minimum of effort, as they barely released a trailer two months prior to its January premiere. The month studios released their weaker movies knowing audiences are going to theaters, as they already spent their disposable income on the December holidays. Fuck you! It's January! $89 million lost, but that's just a minor dent to them. Once the Evil Mouse Corporation got their Marvel and Star Wars, many of their lesser sci-fi properties like Strange Magic or Tron weren't needed anymore. It's the business equivalent of netting inside a girl and not asking about her day. <laughs> then, all at once, there he was. Monkey Bone! From the director of The Nightmare Before Christmas. Tim Burton? No, Henry Selick, who gave us Monkey Bone, a raunchy comedy that borders on experimental about a cartoonist tormented by a stop-motion creature he designed. Okay, Osmosis Jones was stretching it. This is mostly live action, yet incorporates so much 2D, 3D, stop-motion puppets. That's gotta count for something. But maybe it was too out there for audiences and managed to lose. $96 million. In retrospect, the star of the movie, Brendan Fraser, explained, I don't know what happened. They gave the keys to the inmates of the asylum. We went nutty and made a movie. The studio saw it and went, Huh? We have the dubious honor of being in the most expensive art house film ever created. That sums it up. The movie did horribly in test screenings, so they recut it to feel more conventional and had its release dates repeatedly moved around. Marketing didn't start for the film until two weeks before release. By then, it was clear the studio gave up. <laughs> Before we get to number one, here are some honorable mentions that didn't lose as much money. Feel free to name the ones I missed. I'm just trying to find my mom. She's the one that feeds me. She vacuums the house. Come on. Gee, what a shocker. How could such an appealing looking movie using the magic of mocap fail so hard? Mars Needs Moms is the winner of the number one spot for nearly a hundred and twenty five million dollar loss. It killed Image Movers, the Robert Zemeckis production studio blessing us with all these quality mocap movies. And Monster House, that's the only good one. There comes a point where I have to ask, why make an animated movie look realistic? Why not just shoot real actors and add CG characters? The Uncanny Valley strikes again, but even weirder than that was Seth Green, the near 40-year-old actor at the time doing the mocap and voice of the main child character. Is that broccoli? No, that's vomit, but I understand the confusion. I told you to eat that. Well, you're not gonna make me eat it now, are you? I'm in a spaceship. Oh god, it's like a little Frankie Muniz goblin. They dubbed his voiceover with an actual kid so late into production, there's interviews with Seth still promoting the film as the star. By then it was too late. This movie scared off everyone. Mars may need moms, but audiences don't want this bullshit. Mars needs moms. Ah! We are going to shoot a laser at someone! You should bring them and change them underwear! Don't you want a rematch? Milo! Don't forget the trash. Have you cleaned your room? The only thing tougher than having a mom. No broccoli, no TV. It looks like brains. You like zombies. Zombies eat brains. He's getting her back. Mom? From these guys. Let her go! Tomorrow. Welcome to Mars. What's going on? Mars needs moms. <laughs> Man, Mars needs Botox. Don't miss the biggest IMAX 3D adventure in the galaxy. We've got to save my mom. I'm done with your scene, man. <laughs> Mars needs moms. Rated PG. Remember Jared from Subway? 